All right, welcome back. So I have been reviewing Marvel's The Infinity Saga in 4K Ultra HD, and I am now in the phase two, which starts with Iron Man 3. This is starring Robert Downey Jr., Don Cheadle, Guy Pearce, Gwyneth Paltrow, John Favreau, and Ben Kingsley. This is written and directed by Shane Black. Screenplay also by Drew Pearce. Tony is showing signs of PTSD after the Battle of New York, obsessively tinkering away, a mysterious terrorist known as the Mandarin surfaces, and the public cry out for Iron Man to save them. I always hear that Thor Ragnarok is a full Taika movie, in, in the way that Taika Waititi's style is fully intact, considering these are normally thought as quite generic superhero films. You know, that they have to all meet to a certain type of tone and aesthetic. But with a deeper relook into the Infinity Saga, I, I think it's quite clear actually who directed which films. There is certainly a, a style that comes out of each one. And I think that is actually the thing that de determines which ones are popular and which are not. When it comes to Taika, Taika's comedic style is so strong, it's quite obvious that he made that film. Favreau set the baseline for tone and aesthetic, that's for sure, in, in the Marvel Universe, but definitely I feel like this is a Shane Black movie. You can just tell. And I'm saying this because Iron Man 3 itself, it might as well be an amped up sequel to Kiss Kiss Bang Bang. It has all the comedic beats and deeper character studies that his films are known for. It just exists in this larger narrative that you know we know as the Marvel Cinematic Universe. And I think audiences often judge them based on their past and post installments. So it's, it's not entirely fair, I don't think, if you if you actually see them for what they are. I really enjoy this film. This is the film where I actually loved Tony Stark. But like this is when I began to really love him. I mean, he was fun before, but he's obviously still the brash, quick, quipping douchebag who who knows everything. And as alluring as that is, it's still it's still kind of annoying, and you don't want to relate to him because you don't want to be like that, really. This is the time where we see Tony in his most vulnerable state. It's the most vulnerable I'd ever seen him. In fact, it's the most vulnerable I've ever seen a superhero. Here he he exhibits like quite believable signs of, of anxiety and depression, post-traumatic stress disorder. It's all quite realistic, I feel, from Downey's performance. As someone who's had anxiety attacks, panic attacks and such, the beats that he goes through, they're all things that I've been through myself and it's very real to see that to see him do that and to see someone like Tony Stark do that is is really interesting. It's great because this movie allowed me to see more of Tony, then I got to see more of Rhodey or Don Cheadle. Uh, I got to see his relationship deepen with Tony Stark, which is great. Uh, there's more of an emphasis on how important Pepper is. You get to see Tony in this much larger scope and how he is actually quite a major player in the world now, not just as this icon or celebrity, he's way above that now, he's more like a cog that actually changes the world, that turns the world. And this is where I think he finds himself and, and understanding that his responsibility now is too big to just be dilly dally in the public eye. So there is a lot about this movie that isn't what we wanted, I don't think. It's not what most people wanted. They wanted to see another Iron Man movie where Iron Man just goes off and kicks ass. But instead, we got to see some serious groundwork for what made Iron Man's arc so special, so interesting towards the end. The story essentially is another Shane Black murder mystery. Two-dimensional one at that though, but still there's like there isn't much really of a, a mystery to go by other than the fact that there is that one lead that when is a bomb not a bomb and yeah that's kind of cool but that that bit was just repeated for a while and the, the audience finds out exactly what that is quite early on and kind of leaves it kind of boring to watch really because we're just waiting for our hero to actually figure out what's going on as opposed to us being on the ride with them slowly learning what happened so I thought that was a bit of a mistake you know there is that all uh, that other big twist two-thirds into the movie that has been extremely divisive 
but I did really enjoy it. I thought it was fun, but it is hard to say whether or not something is truly cheap of a twist when it's funny because humor can carry the banal to astounding heights. <laughs> so, and I mean, memes are a testament of that. <laughs> it's like seeing a cat do a flip or fall on its face. I mean, it's a cheap click and you got my view, but I'll come back to that later. Something I didn't know about this film before was actually how practical a lot of the effects were. Like a lot of what is happening was done for real. Like there's a, a sequence later on, which you've seen in the trailer, where uh, they're falling out of the sky and Iron Man has to collect like over 10 people and somehow stop them from splatting into the ocean. That was like real stuntmen in the sky doing a real stunt. Uh, it, it looked fantastic. It looked pretty amazing in 4K, to be honest. It's such a beautiful sky and a stunt that's never really been done to that level before. And also the, the scene where Tony's uh, Malibu beach house gets blown up. A portion of that whole house of his was actually recreated in a warehouse and put on a gimbal and everything you see as it breaks apart and blows up, that's all real practical effects. It's, it's, it's so strange because those kind of things are taken for granted now because you're just so conditioned to the high level of VFX that these movies have. I mean, I can't really go much further into talking about the movie unless I start talking about spoilers, so spoilers ahead. So giving credit where it's due, some of these stunts do look great in 4K, but like the skydiving rescue scene that I was referencing earlier, I never really felt like when I first saw that scene that it was as complex or as daredevil as it really was because there were these telltale hints of, of VFX because obviously in the Iron Man suit and so on. When I first saw this shot, I never really thought it was that much of an intense shot uh, until I saw the behind the scenes. There it is, I noticed why I didn't really ever feel like these people were in any actual danger. But let's, let's just recap. There's over 12 people actually did the skydive and they filmed the sequences with stuntmen, falling over and over, filming all these different sequences, they composite them together, and then they remove the one real threat that gave gravity to the entire scene, the ground. I never once felt like that was real. Like, I, it looked incredible and it was believable, like it was believable that it was happening, but I didn't actually think that it was really happening. This has happened before as well. If you've seen Mission Impossible Fallout, which is an incredible movie for just a sense alone. If you haven't seen it, definitely check it out. Tom Cruise trained and shot a series of halo jumps and they decided that after filming these incredible jumps that the actual actor performed, they added this layer of clouds and lightning and, and, and like a cityscape that wasn't actually there and it just it just deflated all anxiety or fear for the for the actors because it just it just seemed like a VFX shot and and you know it's not real there's no uh, there's no way I can be invested in that once I saw the actual shots I was like oh my god that's an actual jump he's actually doing that that's incredible it's not fair because I show this to other people and then they just go eh, whatever you know they don't care and I, I get why they don't care I understand why they don't care because they're judging it on face value they don't they don't necessarily need to or should have to look at the behind the scenes to be able to appreciate what's happening if the stunt is coordinated and executed in a way where you can be invested into what's happening that is great execution that's when you've done it right when people are invested without even having to get the context it's so strange that they would do that and it's such a waste it is such a waste you seen point break yeah i'm gonna make a point break reference right here Look at this, and then look at this, or even this. Can you see the difference? Like, can you see how strange that it is compared to Point Break? You look at these, and you can just tell it's not real, because it's subconsciously we can detect the difference. In Point Break, starring Patrick Swayze and Keanu Reeves, Patrick Swayze disagreed with the idea of doing this whole sequence in green screen. If you look, all of Keanu's shots are actually in green screen. But knowing the executives wouldn't allow him to film an actual skydive on their payroll, he just took his friends, because they all know how to skydive anyway, and then filmed 
all of these shots that now are like some of the most iconic shots in movie history ever and they just did it because they knew it would be better they knew it would look better it would be more investing this is this is amazing similar with the destruction of the Starks home I, I didn't re initially realize it was a huge set but now that I do it's, it's much more of a remarkable sequence but I think this is the problem with Marvel movies is that the VFX now has leveled the playing field in a way that people just don't don't assume that it's it's real it's really difficult for them to think that it's real and it's and it's much harder for it to be investing I've, but then again in the later movies i feel that there are so much vfx that we buy in, into it more because we're not watching a film we're watching a strange animation hybrid and that changes it so I, i'd like to talk about that more once we get further down to the, the later phases uh, again, I referenced earlier the twist, uh, which is obviously the, the Mandarin twist, which is definitely a cheap move, but it was executed in such a way that's still entertaining, even now. I laughed and, and thought it was endearing. Considering the Ben Kingsley is such a, a, f like a serious and, and well-established actor, to, to be acting in such a comedic way is so fun and relieving. I get though, given the issues of grounding an ancient and complex villain as the Mandarin, it is going to be very difficult in one movie, especially the movie that has several other uh, villains and, and ties to other parts of the universe. So I understand why they went down the route they did. But with Shang-Chi on the horizon, albeit a persistently distant one, Mandarin fans will get to see a far more comic accurate adaptation so I'm super excited to see how that turns out. Overall, what is most entertaining about Iron Man 3 is its characters. They, we get to see Tony demonstrating how he's certainly not ready to be a father <laughs> with all the sequences with the kid. These two are amazing. I wish that they had done more with with both of them because the humor was just so funny. I love it. <laughs> I love it. As a bastard child, it was it was striking all the right tones. <laughs> His past also coming back to haunt him once again, which is certainly not the last time that it does. Even though there are some reused tropes, all the characters are treated like like real people with opinions and personal goals. Whether they're the, that odd fanboy or the henchmen, even the henchmen have an idea of what is going on and actually have some three-dimensional ideas behind them which is, is great it's really fun it feeds into the humor so well it makes the film that more entertaining even like that that's stuff that i love dialogue is some of the most interesting things for me in any movie there aren't all that many sequences that rely solely on say iron man vfx the you know iron man and suit but there are a lot of extremist soldiers and their terrifying abilities. I really love the work that they have done here, with just the, the way that they made them look. I read the comic before, and it's just just a wild type of enemy for for Iron Man to have to encounter. Uh, especially though the Mark Forty Two and the extremist soldiers look fantastic. There was a couple of moments though where Iron Man's new suit looked a bit odd. I mean, some of the the shots where he was interacting with people was a bit jank or there's a bit where he's walking down some stairs after leaving the mandarin's lair and for some reason the frame rate was a little bit low i don't don't really understand what happened there i'm gonna say this isn't necessarily a 4k worthy film considering the strengths of the film are actually the characters and the storytelling but there are some really great sequences and if you're sitting at home and you've got a beautiful 4k oled sony or samsung 4k tv it, it does look fantastic especially the end sequence with the the house party protocol with all the other suits that turn to make come in and it, it does look very beautiful i'm gonna go see uh wonder vision today episode four is out i really think that we're so close now I, I think we're so close to it picking up into the real truth i feel like we might get a glimpse into the big bad in this episode i'm, I'm not sure I'm, i don't know i don't know i'm just i'm excited I'm, I'm really excited let me know what you think in the comments i'd like to hear what do you think the the mandarin's gonna be like in shang chi do you think he's gonna be just a clone of ben kingsley or do you think that they're gonna make him well hopefully 
Chinese. That would be quite interesting. <laughs> anyway, I'm off. Thanks for the likes. Love to the subs. And I'll see you guys next time.